There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that he turns out to be someone who'll watch over me. Well, there must be some mistake. It's from Mrs. McGuire, Father. As we're here for a celebration. <laughs> Your friend has a lovely voice, Steve. Yeah. Everyone in the neighborhood thought that she could have been a big star. Well, what happened? Well, she's really close to a recording contract. She had bookings everywhere in San Francisco and Lake Tahoe. And a few years ago, she met a guy. <laughs> Love at first sight. Ever since we were kids, when Jillian falls for a guy, she breaks pavement, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, he was married at the time. Uh-oh. His wife died a couple years ago. Is he planning on marrying Julian? Good question. Listen to me, Daniel. There's a limit to how much debt your banks will cover. Now, they know you're over leveraged. Frankly, if they knew how badly, they wouldn't give you five more minutes, let alone five months. Appreciate your efforts, Ed. I'll keep you apprised. It's serious this time, isn't it, Daniel? It's beginning to look that way, isn't it? What are you going to do? I don't know. The fact is, I'm tapped out. Thank you.
I knew I could count on you. Mm. I should have gotten the offer. Well, if you don't hold still, I can't promise anything. When you take a step back, when you see the girl move to the kneeler, okay? And please, don't spill any wax on my shoes. Oh, you're getting uh -uh. oh my gosh, that could be Daniel. I gotta get out Come of here. Come on. I can't let him see me. I think Come I'm gonna on. be sick. Well, you run along to the church. Oh. Father Dowling, wait till you see what I've arranged. The perfect fundraiser for St. Michael's Church. Oh, not now, Father, please. The bishop wants each parish to take charge of local fundraising. And Father, because of our special relationship, I have permission to organize the pilot project right here at St. Michael's. Here's my idea. Bingo. Bingo in a church. What a thought. <laughs> uh, Father. Not just bingo, Marie. Super bingo. With super prizes. Philip, please. Televisions, stereos, VCRs, Frank. and all donated by one of the community's wealthiest businessmen. Oh, it sounds just wonderful, Father, <laughs> but I can't talk to you now, you see. I've got a wedding I have to perform. Marie, would you see if Father Presswick would like a little snack? Snack? Thanks, Marie. Children, put out the candles. Jillian, I think we should go back to the rectory, hmm? Jillian? Jim, what happened? Where's Daniel? This morning, we were, uh, we were up north, and the Tim truck lost the wheel. Daniel wanted to fix it. I, I, uh, Where is he? I, Daniel had a heart attack. And I did everything I could but the nearest town. Where's Daniel? I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Daniel's dead. <sighs> In light of certain recent financial reversals, the bulk of Mr. Trask's estate, which according to the terms of his will, would have been inherited by Ms. McGuire, his long-term companion, instead has been forced into receivership. Now, that leaves the inheritance after the sale of the house and furnishings to pay the appropriate taxes and probate with a net negative financial balance. You mean there's no money? There's none. But he was so rich. He owned hotels, yachts, airlines. Excuse me, Father. His bank owned hotels, yachts, and airlines. Mr. Trask merely made the payments on them. Now, there are two bequests that remain unaffected by this bankruptcy. Dr. Palmer, according to the will, Mr. Trask made you a personal loan in the amount of $200,000. That loan is hereby forgiven and need not be repaid. Now. Ms. McGuire, the will directs that I give you this to quote Mr. Trask in his own words in the will, uh, last token of his love. Excuse me. Julian, if there's anything I can do. You're his girl, right? Am I right? When I'm right, I'm right. Am I right? <laughs> that all depends. Who are you? This is Ricky Dupree, Frank. He runs a floating casino on the south side, among other things. Oh. How come you're so well informed, Mr. sister? Mr. Dupree, in my neighborhood, guys like you were as common as rats. I like you. I'm not sure why, but I do. Just what is it you want, Mr. Dupree? 
Before your boyfriend conveniently checked out, he managed to lose $500,000 to me. Now, I know what you're gonna say. How could I let him get into me for so much money? Well, he was Daniel Trask, after all, so I kept extending him credit. And this is what I get for being so gullible. I gotta come here, humiliate myself, and in your time of grief, I have to tell you, if you don't come across with the hey, money... Just relax, Joanne, all right? you don't know this man anything. Excuse me. Excuse me. I know Trask had money stashed. All I want is what's mine, Father. Fair is fair, n'est-ce pas? Why don't you give it a rest, Dupree? Hey, what brings your flat feet to this side of town, Morgan? It's the beauty of the law. Everybody gets protection. All right. Pet cop or no pet cop, you owe me. All right? I'm Father Frank Dowling, and this is Sister Stephanie. We're from St. Michael's. Ed Morgan, Father, Sister. What do you mean, pet cop? We've never met Miss McGuire, but uh, Mr. Trask had me keep an eye on you a couple of times. You followed me? Well, strictly for your own protection. Of course, I helped out Mr. Trask a couple of times. Uh, Mr. Trask and I had an arrangement. Would you know if that still holds? What? Well, we don't have to talk now. Let's just say I can do for you what I did for him, and in return, Maybe you can do for me. You didn't know anything about this, did you? Father, I swear. He had half a million dollars in gambling debts, and he dealt with a crooked cop. Steve, I know what you're thinking. When it comes to men, Jillian McGuire's just a magnet for losers. No, Jillian, that's not what I meant. But Daniel once told me that he'd always take care of me. And he did. Jillian, he died broke. No, he didn't. And if you guys come to the bank with me tomorrow, I'll show you. A few months ago, Daniel had me rent a safety deposit box in my name with him as a co-signer. Every week, he gave me deposits to make. Cash deposits? I made the last deposit about a week ago. Daniel said that if that if anything ever happened to him, that the money in this box would take care of me for the rest of my life. Well, just how much cash is in there? I'm not sure. Maybe two million? So you see, Steve, Daniel really did love me. Oh, no. I've been robbed. I've been robbed. Thank you. Your safe deposit box was checked out this morning at 10.45 and returned at 10.50. Well, that means whoever took the money must have done it just before we got here. Hmm. But Daniel and I were the only ones authorized to open that box. Jillian, this is the sign-out card you just used. And you'll notice that yours is the only signature on this side of the card. Now, look at the bottom signature on the other side, made almost a half hour ago. I don't understand. Daniel Trask. Frank, the signature at the bottom and the one on the top. The I noticed that myself, Steve. They're close enough to pass a superficial inspection, but they really don't quite match. And the bank officer said a man signed that card, Daniel Trask. Since she's never seen Daniel by sight, she went by the signature and the fact that he had a key. A key? How could he have a key? Jillian, every safe deposit box has at least three keys, two for the customer, one for the bank. And when you opened that little onyx box that Mr. Olson gave you, we all saw that there was only one key. Steve, what's going on? I don't know, Jilly. We're going to find out. Let's get you home. I'll arrange for Daniel's funeral. There won't be a funeral. Dr. Palmer took care of everything last night. Daniel was cremated this morning. I still say we should call the police, Frank. What are we going to tell them, Steve? Hmm? That someone signed a dead man's name to a safe deposit box card? No. We only have Jillian's word that there was ever anything in that box. Never mind the $2 million. Yeah, but Jillian had a list of serial numbers. Didn't she give it to you? Yes, but until we have the money, it's just a list. It doesn't prove anything. Frank, Jillian gave up everything for Daniel Trask. That money belongs to her. 
And there's got to be something that we can do. She, she needs us. Well, apparently Ricky Dupree knew about that safe deposit box. Yeah, and that cop Morgan could have, too. And Dr. Palmer could have gotten the key from Trask's body. Steve, any one of them could have passed themselves off as Trask at the bank since the bank clerk had never met him. So, we have three suspects. Frank, who do we check out first? <sighs> Palmer's appointment book. You know, if Dr. Palmer was seeing his patients at 1045 when someone was robbing a safe deposit box downtown, then he couldn't have taken Jillian's money. We need to take a look at that book. Father Dowling, the doctor will see you. Thank you. <clears throat> There's something I can help you with, sister? Um, yeah, insurance forms. So what seems to be the trouble, Father? Well, it's just the usual aches and pains that you get at my age. And Sister Stephanie thought it might be a good idea to come and see you. Lucky you had a cancellation this afternoon. Oh, no, you sure are busy, Doctor. I was amazed to find out that you were able to take the time to go up north the other day with Daniel. I needed Daniel's opinion on a piece of property. Mm. You and Mr. Trask were very close, weren't you? Since college. And of course, you knew about his heart condition. Of course. Congenital weakness of the aorta. Hmm. Odd that he never told Jillian all the time they spent together. She says he never said one word about it. Well, Daniel didn't like admitting any kind of weakness. Naturally, I couldn't tell her about it myself. Naturally. Forgive me for asking, Doctor, but if you were in so much debt to Mr. Trask, why was he helping you buy property? I'm not sure that's any of your business. I'm not sure it is either. Actually, the property was undervalued. He was going to have Daniel co-sign the note to the lender, then resell the property and pay him back. Hmm. Daniel was my best friend, Father. Nothing can make up for his loss. Ah? Uh, ah. Uh. So you run this whole office all by yourself, huh? You know, I'll check on that later. Must take a lot of work. No, all it takes is a little organization, sister. Organ I wish I could get organized. You know, Father Dowling's always running around. I can never keep track of him. So how do you do it? How do you keep track of um, checkups and reminders to patients, that kind of thing? Well, we use uh, two appointment books. Yes. Oh, no kidding. Can I see? Yeah, sure. See, this one's for reminders. Uh-huh. And then this one is for the actual appointments? Right. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to have to get one of these. <laughs> well, Father, with a little calorie counting, you don't have a thing to worry about. By the way, when you arranged for his cremation, what did you do with Daniel's personal belongings? What do you mean? Well, did you happen to find a key in his clothing, a safe deposit box key? If I did, I gave it to Jillian along with the rest of Daniel's things. Mm. Keep an eye on him, sister. I checked the book, Frank. Palmer canceled all his appointments this morning. He wasn't here. Maybe he's taking another loan. Maybe this one for $2 million. Get rid of this. Are you sure you know how to work that thing? <sighs> Nothing to it. The man at the rental shop was quite clear in his directions. Out of press what are you doing? Oh, sorry, Father Dowling. Murray and I are just ironing out a few technical difficulties. Trying to figure out how to run it. I'm sure I'll have everything under control by tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon? 
That's supposed to be the super bingo game, Father. It's going to be quite an event, Father Dowling. St. Michael's is giving out more prizes worth more money than any other bingo game in Chicago church history. Hmm. Just where are you getting these prizes from, Father? A generous donation from a faithful parishioner. He'll be dropping some of the prizes off at the church basement tomorrow morning. The bishop himself might even attend. I happen to know he needs a new VCR. And I can't for the life of me figure out what is wrong with this machine. Hmm. It isn't plugged in. Oh, thank you, Marie. Ah, oh, there we go. And here we go. It just needs a little fine tuning. Oh, for heaven's sake. Try turning it off. Looks like somebody hit the jackpot. Uh, thanks, Marie. Sister. Sorry. There's one over there under the bike. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine who runs a book downtown. I figured he'd know where to find Ricky Dupree. Does he? Yeah, he says he runs a casino in a warehouse over on Wabash. So what do you think, Frank? You feel lucky? You'll pick him up, then. Just leave him on the fire. Don't they think it a little odd that we're here? Doesn't matter what they think, Frank. Besides, they don't care whose money they take. Yeah. Uh, Marty sent us here. Place your bets. If Ricky Dupree stole $2 million from Jillian's safe deposit box, He's certainly in the right business to launder her money. Ricky's probably got the money in his safe, Frank. And all that means is that you got to win enough so that Ricky's got to pay you out of his safe. And we'll check the serial numbers, and if they match, then he's the thief. I don't know about this gambling, Steve. Well, Frank, it's not gambling. It's a sure thing. See, my Uncle Henry taught me how to wire a magnet to rig a roulette wheel when I was nine years old. His idea of a party game. Are you sure that thing will work? Absolutely. Now stop worrying. I'd feel a lot safer if we hadn't visited your Uncle Henry in Joliet last Christmas. Look, just trust me, all right? All you gotta do is go in and keep betting double zero. I'll do the rest. Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry, sister. You sure you should be here? Yeah. Are you? winner. Five dollars on double zero, please. All right, sir. Frank! No. Yeah, but the thing I didn't get a chance to win. Double zero win. Payoff 35 to one. Place your bets. Frank! Again. No more bets. Double zero wins again. Place your bets. Yeah. You better get out here. There's a guy taking down the place at the roulette wheel. What? All right. Let it ride. Uh, uh, sure you want to do that, Father? You walk away right now, you get almost seven grand free and clear. Buys a lot of prayer books. How much if I win? 214,375. I'll walk away for 100,000 in cash.
spin it. don't match. At least we know that Dupree doesn't have Jillian's two million dollars. We can take him off the list. Yeah, but that still leaves Dr. Palmer and Lieutenant Morgan. Mm -hmm. St. Michael's Rectory. Father Telling? Jillian? What is it? What's wrong? Dr. Palmer. He's dead. And I'm in trouble. Hey, Kevin. Right? They've accused me of killing Dr. Palmer. Well, you're still entitled to bail, and you're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, we're gonna help you. Right, Frank? Of course we are. Uh, look, I'll be along in a minute. Coffee? You wanna know what we've got? If it doesn't compromise your case. Father, my case is open and shut. Palmer's lying dead with a knife in his heart. Jillian's on the scene. That's your means and opportunity. Daniel Trask's fortune is your motive. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. You don't believe that. Jillian McGuire is a decent girl. And Trask wasn't the rich man everyone thought. Yeah, it must have been quite a shock to both of them. Both of them? Jillian and Palmer. They're both in Trask's will, and together they plan Trask's murder. Palmer takes him out into the boonies, kills him, Cremates the body to avoid an autopsy. Then they can settle back and share the Trask fortune. When surprise, surprise, no fortune. Just a two million bucks cash that Jillian says was in the safe deposit box. And Palmer gets greedy and grabs the cash. We found the deposit box key on it. And Jillian goes to get her share. And they argue. The rest is history. What's the matter for you? Too bitter for your taste? That's right, yeah, straight ahead, second door on your right. Careful now. Marie, what is all this? The prizes for Father Presswick's Super Bingo game. Oh. You know, Father, with all those TVs and VCRs, the church basement is beginning to look like a discount electronics store. <laughs> I've been practicing. You know, we could use a new TV in the rectory. Father Dowling? I've been looking all over for you. I want you to meet Horace Johnson. He's our bingo prize benefactor. Oh, Mr. Johnson, you're a very generous man. I've received so much from this community, Father. All I want to do is give a little bit back. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, please. Oh, uh, just, just a second, Father Dowling. I, 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 I want to get your opinion on our sign. <laughs> oh! Did you get that? Thank you, Horace. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, I, I, I'm sure you don't want my opinion, Father. Oh, please? Well, it, it says it all, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> Frank, listen to this. Tell Father Frank what you just told me. 
Last night, while I was getting ready for bed, somebody called. It was a woman. Did you recognize the voice? No. She said that if I wanted to know what happened to the money in Daniel's deposit box, that I would have to meet her at Dr. Palmer's office in 15 minutes. She also said that if I told the police or anybody else, I'd never know what really happened to Daniel. What does she mean, what happened to Daniel? Lieutenant Morgan thinks that uh, Daniel was murdered by Dr. Palmer. Oh, my God. Jillian, he also suspects that you and Palmer did it together. Oh, Frank, that's ridiculous. I know. I didn't. I couldn't. I loved him. When you went to Palmer's office, he was dead. Did you notice any sign that someone might have broken into it? No, the door was open. Steve, what am I gonna do? Well, I think you should stay here for a little while, all right? I have Marie make up the spare bedroom. You just go on and get some rest, okay? Go on. Just open the door. Steve, I think we should go and take a look at Palmer's office. Whoever really murdered him might have left a clue that the police missed. Come on. Somebody broke the police tape. Working overtime? <laughs> Father, you startled me. Sorry. Does Lieutenant Morgan know you're going to Dr. Palmer's files? What? Oh, oh no. <laughs> this isn't what you think. Uh, Dr. Palmer told me to get rid of this file yesterday. Why didn't you? Well, it, it's Dr. Palmer's file on Daniel Trask. Mr. Trask just died, and I thought if there were legal questions, and I was the one who destroyed the file, well, I, I didn't want to get involved. I was just putting it back. Have you been talking with Lieutenant Morgan? No, we discussed the case. Why, is there anything wrong? Well, uh, I saw him parked outside yesterday when I left. I don't think that he knew that I saw him, but I, I saw him go into the building. Lieutenant Morgan was here? Don't tell him I said so. I, I don't want him coming after me. Claudia, do you think that uh, Lieutenant Morgan had anything to do with Dr. Palmer's death? I didn't say that. And I won't testify to it. All right. Frank, mm. she thinks that Morgan killed Palmer. Well, sure. I mean, Morgan and Daniel Trask had some kind of business deal, right? Somehow Morgan got a hold of Trask's safety deposit box key. Then Trask dies, Morgan goes in, clears out the box, then he kills Palmer to frame Jilly and gets away with $2 million. Mm. It makes perfect sense, Frank. That well, certainly is the theory particularly since Daniel Trask had no history of heart trouble. Well, Lieutenant Morgan is just about the only suspect we have left. Lieutenant, there's still something that is bothering me about Dr. Palmer's death. Father, I got 10 minutes before I go off duty. Can this wait till tomorrow? Oh, well, I thought police were like priests. None of us are ever really off duty. OK, what do you want to know? Well, first of all, how did you manage to arrive at the scene only a few minutes after Palmer's death? Before your friend could get away? Hey, I'd love to be able to tell you it was a combination of great instinct and brilliant police. The truth is, I got an anonymous tip. From a woman? No, a man. Disguised voice. Well, doesn't that strike you as a bit odd? Sure, but everything about police work is odd. The point is, we've got Jillian McCoy for Palmer's murder, and we can make it stick. Father, would you? Uh, well, just tell me this, then. What were you doing yesterday afternoon outside of Palmer's office? What are you talking about? I wasn't anywhere near Palmer's office yesterday afternoon. The door, Father. We have to talk. This isn't going 
going the way we planned. Now some of the others want out. Bring the paperwork and we'll meet at my place. Don't look, Steve. Frank. You don't have to snoop around, Father. We have nothing to hide. Lieutenant Morgan is a nudist? Apparently, there was some kind of an arrangement between Daniel and Morgan's nudist group. Daniel leased them exclusive use of a secluded wing of one of his resort hotels during the summertime, and in return, Lieutenant Morgan moonlighted certain kinds of security for him. But when he approached me after Daniel died... Well, he just wanted to find out if you'd continue the arrangement. So he's not crooked? Well-tanned, yes. Crooked, no. Hmm. But Dr. Palmer's nurse... Claudia Marshall. She saw Morgan at Palmer's office yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon? Lieutenant Morgan was at a travel agency trying to find a new resort for his group. Yeah, and he's got a briefcase full of travel brochures to prove it, too. So the police will say that I'm the only suspect left. You don't really think I did it, do you, Father? Chilean, the only crime you ever committed was giving your trust to men who didn't deserve it. Your only victim was yourself. Have you got the address? Yeah, I called the Chicago Nurses Registry. Palmer's nurse? Uh -huh. She lied about seeing Morgan yesterday. Maybe we should find out why. Bye. Thank you. See you later. Claudia's at 7050 Foster, apartment number 24. That should be in this block. Frank, Claudia couldn't have taken Jillian's money. A man signed it out at the bank. Now, the only men suspects that we've had are Dupree, who we cleared already, a Palmer, who is dead, and Morgan, who's off getting a tan. I think we're barking up the wrong tree, Frank. I really do. Maybe not. There she is. Steve, Steve! What? We're never going to catch her. Look, she's got a lot of luggage, Frank. Wherever she's going, she's not coming back. Yeah, but how are we going to find her? I've got an idea. Do you have a quarter? Thanks. Hello, Luke Taxi. Yeah, we were expecting a cab for Claudia Marshall about an hour ago. Where is it? Well, you did. Are you sure? Well, can I have the destination, please? Yeah, it's, it's very important. All right, thank you very much. Let's go. That suitcase looks like the perfect size to carry $2 million, wouldn't you say, Frank? 
I would say you're right on the money. So Dr. Palmer must have killed Trask and stolen the money after all, Frank, and then Claudia killed Palmer to have it all for herself. No, Steve. Palmer didn't kill Daniel. Jim Palmer was Daniel's friend. But Palmer's choice of friends was as poor as Jillian's choice of lovers. So who's she waiting for, Frank? The one person we never suspected. brought the money? It's in the plane, darling. I knew I could count on you. Steve, this is crazy. Fuck your seatbelt, Frank. I'm getting us out of here. What's he doing? He's following us, Steve. Break this hang on, okay? He's gaining on us, Steve. Hang on. I'm impressed. Nice work, Steve. I think I know what happened. Daniel faked his own death with Dr. Palmer's help. And then Palmer must have shown another body to the coroner, then had it cremated before the switch was noticed. And then Daniel killed Palmer and framed Jillian for the murder. Well, we can go back now, Steve. Steve. Easy for you to say, Frank. Where did you learn to fly, anyway? Who said I knew how to fly? almost got himself arrested. Arrested? For what? Receiving stolen goods, Father. Meet Horace Johnson, a.k.a. F. Price Harry. Highest volume dealer in hot goods this side of Detroit. He's a fence. Got that right. Harry must have been tipped when we had his regular place staked out, so last couple of days, thanks to Father Presswick, he's been doing business out of your church basement. Father Darling, I swear I didn't know. Might have gone on for a couple of weeks if I hadn't spotted Harry at your bingo game. Father, I came by to uh, ask if you'd keep what you saw this afternoon strictly on the QT. Father Dowling, this is a disaster. How am I going to explain this to the bishop? Explain what? Oh, Philip, how shrewd of you to help the lieutenant to capture Mr. Johnson. Right, lieutenant? Right! Let's go! 
I won that last game, you know. Does this mean I don't get a prize? Marie, you and I have had a very difficult day. Let's you and I go have a glass of Father Downing's sherry. Steve told me about Daniel. I was really set up last night. Well, he set everyone up, Julie. Yeah. But I trusted him. Don't let that happen anymore. Julian, give your trust to the people you know and get to know the people you trust. That's nice. Yeah, who said that? That's the nudist association's motto. Right. Well, if it isn't, it should be. <laughs>